Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And may the Lord forgive us for how little time we spend in such a treasured gift that he has given us as his holy word. Well, friends, I trust that this finds you feeling overjoyed in being a partaker in the good things of the Lord Jesus Christ and that your heart is swelling with the blessings of being a member of the family of the Lord Jesus. Well, friends, we are beginning a new study today in the book of Romans. Now, as I have stated before, the book of Romans is a deeply theological book. Volumes have been written on this book. And so I want to tell you right up front, this is not going to be a collegiate course on the book of Romans. We are merely going to be touching the surface issues of what it means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus. And what differs from the Old Covenant, the First Covenant, the Old Testament, and the New Covenant, the Second Covenant, or what we would call the New Testament. And more than anything, we want to draw from this letter written to the Romans by the man Paul, how we can take these truths, apply them to our lives, and be better followers of the Lord Jesus through each and every moment that we live upon this earth. So with that being said, I trust that you have the book of Romans open in front of you, and let's begin at verse 1. Now, as with any letter, Paul is going to introduce himself and the purpose, the reason why he is writing this letter. And so we're going to have an introduction, then we're going to have the body of the letter, and then we're going to have the conclusion or the final thoughts. So the first thing Paul states is that he is the author. He says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, this word servant in the Greek is doulos, and doulos simply refers back to Exodus chapter 21. And what we find in Exodus 21 are the laws that are given if a Hebrew were to buy a slave. And the word slave isn't used or does not indicate what we think of today. They were not to be mistreated. They were simply house servants. And so in verse 2 of chapter 21 of Exodus, it says, If you buy a Hebrew servant, six years he will serve you. But in the seventh year, you will let him go free for nothing. Now, if he began his servanthood by himself, he shall go out by himself. In other words, when you set him free on the seventh year, he will leave by himself. If he was married, then his wife shall go out with him. But if his master has given him a wife, and she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. Now, if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, I love my wife, I love my children, I will not go out this seventh year, but I will remain a servant of my master. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, he shall bring him to the door, or unto the doorpost, and his master will bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. In other words, he will drive a metal stake or a metal spike through his ear, and that will indicate that he now belongs to his master forever. And the reason he's decided to stay is because his master has treated him so justly, so respectfully, and he loves his master. And so Paul here, back to Romans chapter 1, verse 1, says, I am a doulos, a bondservant, a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because he is such a good master, I pledge my allegiance to him for life. Yet Jesus has not called me to simply be a follower of his, but an apostle of his. Now, an apostle is a sent one sent directly by the Lord Jesus to take the message of Jesus to the world, to those who don't know about him. And because of this, I, Paul, have been separated unto the gospel of God. Now, when Paul says separated here, what he's indicating is that I'm a Jew. 
I'm a Hebrew. I'm from the bloodline of Israel, specifically from the bloodline of Benjamin. And yet I'm going to forego everything that I've been taught my entire life as a Jew, and I'm going to hold to the teachings of Jesus. Now, this may not seem to be so profound a statement to us, but at that time, that was profound. And it caused Paul to be in prison, to be beaten, to be flogged, to be mocked, and to be mistreated. And I think it's important for us to understand in today's age, especially with all the information that we have today, even more specifically, all the false teachings that we have from all the false religions, be it Buddhism or Muslim or Mormon or Jehovah Witness or even the charismatic movement. One of the hardest aspects for us to become a follower of the Lord Jesus today as it was in Paul's day, is to empty ourselves of all the things that we have learned, all the things that we have been taught, all the things that we have been told, and conform ourselves only to what we find in the pages of Holy Scripture. And that's not an easy process, friends, but it is a must if we're going to be a follower of the Lord Jesus. We have to forego, we have to separate ourselves from all the things that we think we know, and we need to attach ourselves only to the gospel of God, which we find, again, only in the pages of Holy Scripture. Now, Paul continues in verse 2. He says, which he had promised, God had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. In other words, the Jesus who I, Paul, am now serving is on every page of the Holy Scriptures. And when Paul is speaking the Holy Scriptures, he's talking about the Old Testament because the New Testament had not been written as of yet. And this is what the writer of Hebrews meant when he said in chapter 10, verse 7, that in the volume of the book, all things have been written about Jesus. And so Paul says, the God whom has called me has separated me unto the gospel which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, that the Messiah would come, that the promised one would come. And these writings in verse 3 are concerning his son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord, a Lord is a master. This is a English word, meaning English as in the land of England. They called their masters lords. And so when we call Jesus Lord, there's something very significant that we're saying. He is our king. We are his subjects. And his rule is our highest command. Now this Jesus, the Messiah, was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Notice that, according to the flesh. Jesus said you must be born again. And to be born again, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Well, the water would indicate a woman's water breaking when she brings new life into the earth. And so Paul says Jesus was born physically according to the flesh, and he was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit, the Spirit of holiness. And he did this by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, for obedience to the faith. This should remind us of what James said, faith without works is dead. And so obedience is required. And he says in verse 6, this gospel is not only for me or the apostles alone, but it's for you also who are the called of Jesus Christ, the hand-picked, the chosen, the elect. And so when we read this letter, let us make it very personable because it's not only written to the Romans that received the letter on that day some 2,000 years ago, but it's written to us as well, friends. And so he says, To all that be in Rome, or all that be in Christ, beloved of God, called to be saints, called to be those who have set themselves apart from this world, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that word grace there means pleasure sweetness, loveliness. So pleasure be to you, sweetness be to you, loveliness be to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now, Paul's introduced the letter. Now, in verse 8, he's going to begin why he is writing the letter. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world, that others look unto you as an example of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. And I make request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you. Can you hear the, the love that Paul has for these young believers? I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Now, don't think about the gifts that are listed to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, because these aren't the gifts that Paul's talking about. We'll see that in verse 12. He says, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. That is, in other words, the gift that I'm speaking about is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith of both you and me. In other words, that I might encourage you to continue on your journey to remain strong in your faith, and you may do so for me as well. That's the gift that we impart to one another. Encouragement. The gift to stand fast no matter what hell throws our way. Now, I would not have you to be ignorant in this, friends, or brethren, as Paul says, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but I was lit hither to, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Why? Because Paul understands that fruit is manifested in his life on a moment-by-moment -moment basis because he is always learning from those who are good and those who are bad. He's learning what to do, and what not to do. And so when he's attacked by someone, for instance, who's not considered to be good, instead of lashing out, defending himself, cursing the person, he's able to exercise love to draw deep within himself and show the love of Jesus, thereby producing fruit in his life. And so he says, I'm a debtor to the Greeks for this. I'm a debtor to the barbarians for this. I'm a debtor to the wise, because when I debate with them, they sharpen me in the word of God. And I'm a debtor to the unwise, because as they question me on why I believe what I believe, I'm able to draw from the resources of the study of the word of God, and this too sharpens my skills in the word of God. So as much as is in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. In other words, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so Paul's saying, I'm not ashamed to preach the word of God because I know that by preaching the word of God, many will heed the call to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ alone and find forgiveness in him alone, and thereby they will become the children of God because of the faith that they've exercised in Jesus Christ. And he says, I'll preach this to the Jew first and also to the Greek or also to the Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Now, what does that mean from faith to faith? Well, many of those that are reading this letter are believers in the Old Covenant. They are practicing and keeping the law of God. And that in and of itself is a form of faith. But their faith must not only be in the writings of the scriptures of the Old Testament, of the law particularly, but their faith must be in the promised one, the Messiah, who's written about through all the pages of scripture or all the pages of the Old Testament. And so they must move their faith from the old covenant to the new covenant. And this is what Paul is saying. The righteousness of God to be found in good standing with God, one must move from the old ways to the new ways. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. 
And faith not only requires a belief in something, but if you believe what it is, then you're going to obey what it says. That's why James says, you say that you have faith, but the devils themselves believe in Jesus. So therefore, faith is not enough because faith without works is dead. And faith, friends, is simply a byproduct of our relationship with the Most High. The stronger the relationship you have with Him, the greater your faith will be. As I have pointed out in past videos, we look at stories, for instance, like David and Goliath. And we think that David had such great faith before Goliath or Daniel in the lion's den. We think that he had such great faith to be thrown in with the lions. But faith was not what was upon their mind. Their allegiance, their love for the God whom they served, that was what was upon their mind. And David wasn't going to allow an uncircumcised Philistine curse his God. And so because of his love for God, he stepped out and faced the giant and his faith was made evident. But his faith was based upon his relationship with the Most High. And this had been cultivated over many years of submission, of surrender, in seeing God as the Most High and himself only a worm of the earth. And that is true for us too, friends. It's all about our perspective. For how we see ourselves is how we see him. And how we see him is how we see ourselves. And so as we see Jesus lifted in glory, exalted and adored by all creation, it causes us to bow low before him, understanding the price that he paid for us, and realizing that we owe him our lives. And because we understand this, we seek to serve him. We seek to follow him in the smallest of ways, very observantly, knowing that he is our king and we are merely his slaves. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. Next time we'll pick up in verse 18, which is going to be a transition in the letter so I would encourage you to read that portion, specifically verse 18 of chapter 1 to verse 32 of chapter 1. Now, it is my prayer that the things that you are learning through these studies is changing you and helping you to conform yourself to the will of the Father through the life of Jesus and by the power of his Holy Spirit. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you and I'll see you on the next video.